morning there, Traveler. Seems you have to stay the night. I don't doubt it. Those cultists just haven't been leaving here at all. They have the place completely surrounded. God damn. I don't know what we're gonna do about them, but... Whatever needs to be done needs to be done fast. We need to get this story told. I know you don't quite get it, but... If this story doesn't get out there, then there are some serious ramifications. Wing over, are you almost ready? Yeah, yeah, alright. Okay, the spells are up. Uh, they seem to be doing pretty well. Uh, okay, perfect. Right, come on over here, traveler. Come sit with the rest. Alright, let's see here. Uh, well, uh, surprisingly, we actually got a bit of fan mail through. Um, that poor mailman. Uh, he kind of looks like an octopus now. I'm not sure what they did to him, but he's still delivering the letters, so... I guess, hooray? Anyways, this here review is from Jesus Freaks 578 Wacha! I added the wacha. Five stars. Prologues are a good idea. Love the way you introduce the characters between the trailer and the prologue individual episodes. Good audio quality too, exclamation mark, from Another Path. Hey, that's another Bardic group out there, travelers. Definitely an interesting story, I suggest you go check them out. Like the world ended up having to fight Mother Nature itself, or all the plants and the fae and everything turned on everyone, and now this is like uh, 50 or 100 years after the war, and it's all based on people trying to survive in that world. It's very interesting, you should give it a listen. Oh, and, uh, of course we're going to be using the old Battle Bard stuff, so, uh, I know we usually have someone here from Battle Bard's college, but I'm kind of having to fill in for all of them right now because, well, I'm sure you're aware it's very hard to get people from a college to attend an inn surrounded by cultists. Uh, alright, so, let me do my spiel, just get comfy. Greetings, travelers. It's me, Winger of Gimble, famous gnome bard. You might know me from certain things like Bard of the Seven Dice. Or that one time I took over a slaughterhouse with a few friends and we changed the name to Cutting Edge Slaughterhouse. That oh, was a really good place. Anyways, travelers, uh, we're using the sound from BattleBards.com, so why don't you go ahead and hop on over there, use the promo code bard 7 dice get yourself a... A nice subscription, you could really get 15% uh, off and use all sorts of rad sounds. They just added a ton of evocation spells, so I recommend at least giving it a gander. Okay, travelers, we're almost to the end of this arc. Just one more tale after this. But now we will look into Death Shift as they lick their wounds and march back to New Dawn. I present to you Arkham. Part 4 Hey, I'm Bright, and I'm playing Kalsar, the Tiefling Paladin and Chosen of the Antifa. Hi, uh, I'm Humberto, and I'm playing Bordon, Dwarven Cleric and Chosen of Time. I'm Evan, and I'm playing Ronnie, the Half-Elf Bard and Chosen of Chaos. Hey, I'm Robert, and I'm playing MZ, the Gith Yankee Ranger and Chosen One. just escaped the destruction of Arkham. The party, being split in two, managed to eventually meet up after MZ, Ronnie, Amelia, and Yolanda were just dealing with Spellsinger and destroying the spell that held Arkham together. But unfortunately, Yolanda did not come through the portal after it closed behind Ronnie. And with the other two, Kelsar, Borodon, followed with Dan and Chenille, they fought their way after wave after wave of Chosen and Ghouls alike fighting. Chenille was lost in the mix, her leg destroyed. Dan slammed through a wall, 
both lost to the sea of bodies fighting and swinging. After emerging from Arkham blood covered and almost dying, but being saved from Borodon's quick thinking, our heroes now stand in a field while the rain pours down and the thunder rolls overhead. An empty spot stands where Arkham once proudly loomed. Now it is just our heroes, Amelia, Spellsinger, and a couple, a couple hundred, hundred chosen, chosen soldiers. soldiers. There's, There's a few, few that, that you recognize. recognize. Like you recognize Riley, Riley Tyler. Tyler. She's, She's a, a human, human that helped, helped you when you were pretty early, early on. on. She, she was getting you a map back in the, in the Chosen headquarters when you first got there. Are we all together? Yep. You recognize Aodin, who was uh, the guy you actually met in Geldspar. He's like an albino who specialized in different magics. And you also see Quintos there with a couple of versions of himself, looking panicked and looking around. Chanel! Wait, where is Yolanda? Dan! Where, where is everyone? What's going on? Amelia just hurls and just buckles down to her knees and starts throwing up. You see there is blood coming from Amelia, Ronnie, and MZ from their eyes, their ears, their nose. You three, or you two, Ronnie and MZ, your hearing is just starting to come back from that loud explosion. And Spellsinger is on the ground unconscious. Yeah, I'm going to be uh, definitely... Not, like, laying on the ground, but I'm definitely on the ground right now. You're just kind of trying to get your bearings? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to use Mass Healing Word. You start praying to Dumathoin and holding on to your symbol. You have many wounds all over your body. Kalsar is covered in blood. So are you. A lot of it's not yours, but you see both you are heavily wounded. The other guys are wounded. And you start casting the spell, and this healing energy just, like, blasts from you, coating all the people around you. Yeah, and so, uh, so I ask, is everybody okay? How much does that heal for? <laughs> it's like, it's not a lot. It's 1d4, plus spellcasting ability modifier. It'll stop the bleeding. So yeah, I got a one <laughs> on the dice, but everybody got like five HP. So this, uh, the healing goes over you guys. It stops the bleeding from your numerous cuts and everything. It, you guys, your hearing comes back a little bit faster from it. And you're, you're still a little dazed and a little out of it, but you are more coherent. What's that uh, spell singer doing? She is unconscious. Ever since Ronnie grabbed onto her and... Oh, uh, right, right. I'm kind of just clawing at the ground right now, just trying to, like, find, just desperately trying to find a way to get back to Talon and Dan and Chanel. So I have the group, by the way, who's her? That's the wizard we were supposed to kill. And why didn't we? Uh, well, Amelia seemed to know her, um, and so I figured we would just bring her back. Interesting. I mean, Yolanda said the same thing, right? But, uh, so, uh, she's not, like, evil? What What happened? Uh, she was stuck there by some kind of magic spell. Um, so, I figured we probably actually weren't supposed to kill her. Uh, and then everything started exploding. Uh, so, I threw her in the portal and figured I would deal with it later. <laughs> yeah, sh should we start... Um, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, putting shackles on her or something. I'm a little bit concerned. Such a strong, I don't know, like, person. Doesn't look like she's going anywhere. Yeah, you, you have a few hundred soldiers that are milling about. Uh, Riley sees you guys uh, sort of standing there over Spellsinger, and she quickly jogs over. What the hell happened? What was all that? We were just about to charge in there. Uh, do I know that it was that fire that started everything blowing up, or do I know what caused it to start blowing up? Uh, you think it's because the spell ended that was holding it together, and so this place probably went back to its original world. Oh, okay. That was a load-bearing spell, and we kind of knocked it down, so 
uh, one thing led to another, and then uh, it just kind of disappeared. I can't. Sorry, I can't remember. Like on the past, um, uh, on the past session, you guys actually dispelled. I think because yeah, we tried dispelling on her, and so that caused it to blow up. Yeah, Ronnie severed the connection because the the city. The reason it was maintaining its position in the Forgotten Realms was because her soul was tied to it, and she is a planewalker, so her soul was powerful. And so by being linked to the city, it was able to stay there, and then Ronnie severed that link. Okay, got you. Um, d- who's this on the ground? That spell singer. The wizard? Yep. I thought you were supposed to kill her. We were. Uh... Do you guys need some rope or chains or something? You should probably get some cold iron manacles on her. That'll stop her from casting spells. Yeah, I totally agree. So she shouts out to another soldier to grab some. Has anyone even searched her yet? No. I'll go pat her down, make sure there's nothing on her that she shouldn't have. Sure. So you start patting her down. You find uh, two greater potions of healing. And you find a scroll that has counter spell on it and then you find a wand on her as well so i asked the group like do you think is there a chance that she's also a vessel for ah i think i think the last time was the ghoulish one right yeah he's been known to hop over to different people yeah so so that that's what i I asked the group so maybe she's also a vessel for the ghoulish one okay well, I'll throw the scroll to Ronnie. Can't read, but I will try my best. And I guess I'll give the wand to Humberto. Maybe he, he'll have a better use for it. Counter spell. We'll say you get some proficient at reading magic. It's like a natural ability. And like I said, I'll give the wand to uh, Humberto. He'd probably have a better chance of figuring it out than one of us. Well, thank you. Some cold iron manacles get clasped around her wrist, and she's still unconscious on the ground. A lot of the soldiers looking around. You see tons of carts and siege equipment and so many supplies that would have equipped this army that was well over 2,000. And now you see maybe around 300 people left, and they're all looking shocked and stunned. And then uh, quickly, Aodin comes running up. His white robes are just flapping in this wind that's kicking up, and uh, you see that, because it's still the middle of the night, so you see, like, there's a little bit of sun starting to come up on the horizon. We have to get out of here right away. If if we've destroyed Arkham, that means Dorum's coming, and so we need to move. What about Chenille and Dan? Yeah. What? Anyone in there? I don't know where they are right now. That... That place is gone at the moment, so you standing here, that's just going to make you a target. When Spellsinger wakes up, I I talk to her. Oh, oh, sure, but can we get moving? I throw my figurine of the horse on the ground, and then have it transform. (laughs) Yeah, whatever. Let's go. So your horse uh, comes up, and then um, Riley starts shouting orders. Uh, I'd throw out my horse, too. Yeah, i do the same. Firebrand. We're better at sticking together, because if any of us start just wandering off, that's when they're going to attack. Let's go. So you start traveling this whole herd, and you take whatever supplies you can, but there's a lot of equipment that just has to be left behind because you don't have the manpower for it anymore. You're marching in this long line getting as far away from Arkham as you can as the morning starts to pick up. You guys are traveling. There's, You know you're quite a ways from New Dawn, which is more than likely where you're going. Uh, there's a number of people here if you want to talk to anyone or talk to one another. Uh, is there anyone you'd like to talk to? Currently there's Riley. She's with the Valkyries Chosen. There looks to be someone who looks to be um, with the Hunters. She seems important. You haven't met her. There's Aodin, who is that sorcerer that you've known from before, and uh, there's also Amelia there. And uh, Quintos has been seen every now and then. You can see multiple versions of him wandering around. 
I don't know, my character is just too tired. I just want to get back. Yep. Any of you other guys? Or are you just like marching forward, just determined? I'm just marching forward. I'm just in my head right now. I'm incredibly upset. Who's uh, who's, who's this hunter? Can you describe her or him? Yeah, she's this wood elf. She looks like she has a few scars. Uh, pretty seasoned. She has a large bow on her back, a couple swords at her side. She looks like uh, the other hunters in the area are listening to whatever she has to say. What does she have to say? You just hear her giving orders, like uh, oh. making sure they're keeping perimeter. Uh, you have scouts that are up ahead and scouts behind, and everybody's keeping within communication. So it's going to sound a little bit awkward, but can I try to sense where Necro is? Oh, the the god of... Uh, yeah, okay, sorry. I was, I was blanking for a second. Uh, sure. Why don't you give me a religion check? Okay. Because once I... Because I'm, like, extremely concerned, right? So yeah. once I found Necros, because I know that that city, like Arkham, was actually bound to Necros. So, yeah. yeah. Let me let me try. Ugh, I got a eight. Try as you might to put out your feelers, you can't seem to be picking up much of anything. You're very tired and very wounded, so more than likely this is impeding your ability to sense anything. Mm -hmm. Not to mention you're probably more than a little concerned. Your sister's not here. You're probably just wondering where she is. Yeah, so that's exactly the reason why I wanted to sense Necros. Hmm. I mean, I don't know exactly what that would uh, like culminate into, but I was just thinking maybe if I could, you know, sense him, just like the, at least knowing that he's I don't know like alive or whatever. God's, yeah, that makes like, sense. Or you know, I just I it's more of a okay. So she's she may not be fine, but like if Necros is still alive, then uh, Arkham probably wasn't completely. And not utterly destroyed, right? So right. that was my line of thought. Yeah, you can't sense him right now, but that doesn't necessarily mean you can't sense him at all. You are in pretty bad shape. Mm -hmm. So as you guys are traveling along, the first day is a forced march and everyone is exhausted. A lot of times while you guys are sitting on your horses, you're passing out for a little bit and waking back up. And it just seems like every so often maybe someone will come and help lead your horse. Your horses seem pretty smart, though, since they're magic. You guys make it through the first couple of days. Your hit points are, as far as game mechanics go, your hit points are all back. Your spells are back. Your wounds have been treated. And now people are feeling okay. And as you've been going, you've been kind of taking stock of who's all with you. You found out that Diurna was recovered. She managed to make it out. She was really wounded. But after traveling for a few days and getting some attention, she's back on her feet again and now traveling with everyone. Mm -hmm. She seems to be trying to stick near Kelsar, and she seems quite cautious whenever she looks at that stone floating around his head. How do you feel, Diana? I've been better. I was a prisoner there for too long. The things they made us do were terrible. I'm sorry about Dan and Chenille. I cared about them too. Just because that thing ended doesn't mean that they're gone. We'll get them back. I'm pretty good at finding people across worlds. I mean, I found you, so... Yeah. We'll worry about that once we get back. Yeah. I'm sorry it took us so long to save you. I'm just glad you did. How are you feeling? That stone around your head. I don't want to talk about it. And if you ever need to. I don't know what the whole thing behind all that magic stuff is, but I'll give you an ear if you need to talk. You're better off not knowing. Mm, I was better off not being a part of the Silver Shield. But I'm here now. I'm starting to feel the same way about this. I'm starting to feel like I was better off not being with them. At least we're here and we're trying to make a difference. That's very true. 
even if they might not be doing the best, we could do better. We could be better. Go and lose help, Kelsar. Thank you, Diana. So you guys are going along. It's been probably about a week. You know you're probably still at least two weeks away. A lot of the soldiers are still very much on high alert. They're not letting anyone ease up. There's constant shifts going. You guys are starting to get incorporated into the shifts to make sure that things are moving smoothly. Ronnie, during one of the nights, you have to help uh, watch and just make sure things are okay. And Amelia just sits down beside you. How are you doing? Doing fine. Hey, you look okay, actually. Uh, yeah. I, uh... I have a feeling we're getting close to being done and that I can get back to what matters. Uh, anything but this. Just getting famous? I'll be much more famous once this is all done, I have a feeling. I got something for you. And she hands you over. It's like a battered pack of uh, cigarettes. Oh, my old vice. It's been so long. Yeah, I figured it's been a while. She leans back. So what the hell was that stuff that you uh, you were doing back there? How did you break that spell? Uh, dispel? I I don't know what you would even call it in in game in D and D, Lucas. I don't even think you know. Like it's it's a weird ability. You seem to have a bit of control over it and a little bit of knowledge on it, but still, it's as much a mystery as everyone else's powers. Well, uh, it was some kind of spell that got rid of her spell, I think. You said you didn't have those powers. As far as I saw, those were those chaos powers that we've been researching. Nah. I know you charm me, but honestly, I'm so fucking tired. I can't even be mad right now. I am mad, though. Do understand that. That wasn't cool. You know, when you, when you died, and I got tossed through that portal with Ajax, God, I was so, so frightened. I honestly thought you were going to save me. I thought that maybe you didn't die, and that you were going to find me, and, uh, I don't know, take me somewhere or something. I guess I was just holding out hope. I was, I was freaked out. But I guess you barely even knew me, huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, you showed up, uh, and then my life went to shit, uh, and then I died. So, <laughs> she laughs pretty damn hard at that. <laughs> you were already employed <laughs> by that woman. She was gonna do something, Ronnie. Uh, you know. I don't know about that, because she put me on TV, uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure if you weren't there... It was to lure me out. <laughs> I... <laughs> well, lure you out, huh? Not me. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I saw your magic show back at the tavern, and... Uh, a bit of the music you were doing for it actually wasn't that bad. It was better than when I first saw you on TV. Well, I've had a uh, while to improve. I guess you're not drinking as much, huh? Your hands look steadier. Uh, it's more. Ex it's becoming more expensive as we keep going, and I keep not having any money. This suit looks incredibly expensive. How do you not have any money? Because the suit was incredibly expensive. <laughs> Oh, that is you, huh? You know, I I did research on you when, even though you're dead, I found out there's all these other versions of you, and I I looked into all that stuff. I, I listened to your CDs. Horrible covers, by the way. I the, the art was strange, but it wasn't that bad. So how many Ronnie's are left? Honestly, I don't know. There were a couple hundred when we started looking, but around the same time we started looking, Dorum was 
She was cruising through it. You were just one of the ones along the way, and I guess she didn't think anything of it, but she points to that symbol on your hand. Clearly, that has something to do with it. Well, uh, maybe we should put some cover up on it. (laughs) I don't think that's going to make it go away. Aren't you scared of all this shit? Aren't you, like... I have been hanging out with you guys for maybe two days, and this is some of the scariest stuff I've seen. I don't even know where Yolanda is. I've tried messaging her for so long. How do you deal with all this? I don't know. I've already died once. I've been threatened to be killed a whole bunch of my life, so I don't know. This isn't that different. Bigger scale, maybe, but... I always knew the bigger stages were coming, so... Well, you're lucky. You got some people that really look out for you. If it wasn't for that Gith Yankee, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have made it through Arkham. Uh, Yeah, he's definitely the uh, best of the three. Fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) She pats you on the back and says, Well, Dad, you're a lot more competent than I, I gave you credit for. Do you just hear the distance? Fuck you, Ronnie! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go try to get some reverie. Best of luck. Alright, I'm gonna try and not fall asleep. And you fall asleep about five of minutes later. <laughs> and so, we move on to a couple days down the line. And wait, wait, wait. Uh, uh, I just wanted to try to sense, um, you know, like necros again. Sure. Um, so I'm going to use my, like, the cantrip. So, the guidance. Mm. So I got 24 in total. So you reach out, and your mind just sort of goes a little blank as you're just only thinking about Necros. Where could he be? You start feeling the faintest of tendrils coming off you, coming off Kelsar, MZ. Ronnie and Amelia, as well as Spellsinger. Hmm. Like tendrils? Just like tendrils of energy. Like uh-huh, you could just yeah. sort of sense them. Like it it feels like his presence. Hmm. But that's what you're feeling right now. Okay. Yeah, so that doesn't actually like I don't know, give me an idea that Yolanda is alive or not, right? Yeah. You're also feeling them off Diurna as well. Okay. Interesting. So, you guys are traveling along, and we hit another day that you guys are just riding along your horses. And thankfully, they don't tire, they don't need to eat or rest or anything, so... uh, Whenever you feel like you're too tired to walk, you can just summon your horse, which is nice. And Bordon, you're riding along, and Aodin rides up beside you. Well, that was pretty crazy back there, huh? How are you doing? As well as I can, I think. I mean, I just lost my sister, right? So. Yeah. Well, it's tough. A lot of us lost friends back there, and... I mean, hell, you lost family, that's... I'm really sorry to hear that. Yeah, like, that's... That's, like, the second time, and... I'm, I'm so tired of this. You know, I've lost my entire kingdom. I, I saw my father die... Twice. <sighs> like... It's so complicated, I... I don't know. I've had a lot of friends die along this war. I've been in here for a couple years now. Just... But, I mean, we took out Arkham. That's such a huge victory. Yeah, I I totally... I totally agree. I mean... we, We are actually preventing this reality to be swallowed, right? Exactly. By the ancient one, so yeah. But still, I mean, I don't think I was actually prepared for all those losses. I don't think any of us were. We all thought we were gonna go in, take out the ghouls and the wizard, and then just, you know, loot the place for what information we can get and leave. But oh my god, I, I didn't think it would implode on itself. I actually. Like, I don't think it actually imploded. Um, I talked to Necros. And Necros? Yes. Like a god. One of the gods. One of the two gods that actually, like, were there. 
uh, in Arkham. Interesting. Yeah, so what happened was Arkham never actually belonged to this reality, like, or this dimension, or whatever that be. So it just returned back to its own um, dimension, let's say that. So the past couple of days I've been trying to sense Necro, in the yeah. sense of uh, yeah, as long as Necros is alive, maybe Arkham is also like actually got back to its own plane, or like I said, plane dimension or whatever that is. And hopefully Yolanda is alive and well with them, like and everybody else. I mean, as well as somebody can be. Who knows, right? I mean, yeah, uh, uh, it's, it's insane if you think about it. Well, Astoria is a professional in divination magic. If anyone could find that, it would be her. We could ask her to help you uh, pinpoint where this is, and maybe we can figure out where they are and like launch a rescue mission. Maybe. So I, I overheard Diana saying that she also she's also very good at that. So maybe, or or not just that. I mean, oh, that's perfect. And we also have Spellsinger with us, right? I mean, maybe Spellsinger knows something. She hasn't woken up yet, but I mean, if her soul was attached to a spell, that's pretty rough on you to have that severed. I imagine she'll wake up soon. Oh, yes. I mean, but like I said, I'm, I'm still concerned. I, I, I don't think she's actually trustworthy. So, I think the outcome would technically be the same. Um, she being alive or not. So... I'm just hoping that she will be on our side. Yolanda seemed to to have faith in her. So hopefully um, everything's going to be okay. But again, it's a gamble, right? The last time we brought someone from them to our own like vicinity, we had like uh, uh, like that person was actually a spy, right? Which person was that? You mean Opus? No, not not Opus. Oh. Um, it was I. It was one of the portal keepers, and the portal keeper was actually like a werewolf. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. That was the one that Billy was training for a while. Yeah. Wow, it's crazy. It is. I don't know how they even got into the headquarters. The headquarters have so many spells that are set up to block them. Yeah. Like, I, I have no idea as well. Yeah. Right now, like, everything's so, like, hectic, right? And trusting people, especially those people who, like, who had contact with either Dorum or, like, the ghoulish one. Like, who knows, right? They may be, they may look like okay now. And, and when we least know, claws would open them up, you know? And then something, like, I don't know, like, something horrific may just, I don't know, get out of their chest, right? A monster or an abomination or what else? That's a good point. We should look over the prisoners that are all here with us. Exactly. It, would you mind helping me with that tomorrow? I mean, and we're kind of into the day, so uh, tomorrow you want to go over all the prisoners with me? Sure, no problem. I appreciate that. So roll me um, a medicine and an arcana. Roll with advantage because Aodin's helping you. Okay, so my arcana is actually zero, but my medicine is seven, so... Okay. So I got 21. Awesome. And your arcana? So 15 and 21. So going over the prisoners, there's a lot of people who are injured, and you help, you know, like, make sure everything's cleaned up, and a lot of them are wounded. There was one group that kind of freaked you out, because they were triplets, but you guys did extensive looking into them, and they're just triplets, so that was okay. Uh, you can't detect much in the ways of magical signatures. Even Aodin does some detect magic rituals and can't seem to find much on them. There's just the similar traces of Necros that you were getting from uh, the rest of you. So what happens when, I don't know, someone that, well, that would also apply to me, 
So, because Necros wasn't, like, wasn't a divinity from this plane, or this dimension, like I said. Right. What happens, like, Necros doesn't have any followers anymore? What happens? So if all their, fo like, his followers are here now? Well, if no one remembers Necros and no one pays him homage, uh, he will die. That's how a god dies. Uh, that's the true death of a god. There are some other rituals where you can kill a god, as they've done in my world. But uh, for the most part, when a god is forgotten, they'll wander the astral realm where your friend Emzy there is from, and they'll just die, and their bodies will be left floating in the astral realm. Even, even if you're, like, from another plane? So you can, like, they are planeless, right? I mean, it's regardless where, uh, where they are, right? Well, once they start to become forgotten, they lose a lot of their power, and their own demiplane just deteriorates. So they're forced to walk in the astral plane with no home. And maybe another god can come pick them up. Maybe someone will hunt them down and try to kill them there, or a number of things. Maybe they'll find a group of people in there, and then they'll become remembered again. Hmm. But if they don't, they wander it, and eventually they just die. That That's so tragic. So if you think about it, that guy over there, he's probably seen a lot of dead gods. You mean Nimsy? Yeah. Oh. So, when they die, like, do they still have... Do they have a body in the first place? Yeah, there's some sort of physical form. It could be different for a lot of things. It really depends on their image that was manifested from the worship. But yeah, for the most part, a lot of them have physical forms. If they were just energy, like maybe like a swirling ball of fire or energy or something, they'll just dissipate. Oh. But the ones with actual physical bodies, they'll just wander and then just die and this giant body will just float. Hmm. Have you ever heard of Necros before? No, I can't say I have. Well, I don't know. I mean, he was clearly not from this plane, right? But Necros is such... I don't know, like... It's a, it's a, it's a very well-known word, right? I mean, it, it means something. It, just like Necromancer, right? But it needs association. Just because the word's known, if they don't realize it belongs to a god, then it's an empty word. Oh, I understand. I'm just saying Necros should be, like, more known, right? What what happened? I guess it depends what happened to his world. If uh, his world was destroyed or wrecked, then they would probably have forgotten him. Maybe the survivors, maybe a couple people would still remember him, but... If civilization was destroyed, then often enough the records go with it. I think I'll, like, when we, when we get back, I think I'll just go to the library and read a little bit about it. Maybe That's a good idea. Right? So maybe there'll be something there. Something that may give us a clue about, like, I don't know, Arkham's whereabout. Well, if anything, you're tying him to this world. So... If you forgot about him, then you'd probably go if there was no one else. Hopefully the survivors there, they still, like, remember him. But... Hopefully. Who knows? Like I said, it's way too tragic for, like, th those beings. Like, gods. Like, what gods they actually are. Maybe they're just, like, I don't know, very strong creatures. You know? Yeah, I've I've heard I've heard monks that actually became astro um, astro creatures. So who knows? Maybe it's just some like a creature that just got way too strong and then got like reverenced. Or there is rumor that if you're strong enough, you can ascend to godhood. But I don't know what it would take. Probably quite a bit. Yeah, a lot of sacrifice. That's for sure. Yeah. But maybe, yeah, it's possible they get worshipped enough, they pass along, and they become. There's actually a race of creatures that worships an, an idea or something else so 
hard and fervent that they can create demigods, but I just hope they're not here. Oh, I imagine they were, like, they are actually fanatics, right? They are insane. They're these fish people. Oh, yeah, things from the abyss, yeah, they usually are not very, how can I say? I don't know, like in touch with our reality. It's, it's yeah. yeah I, I read, like, never actually met them, but I read about them. Like rumors, you know, murlocs and those kind of things. Uh, yeah. Like these creatures, yeah. You keep on your horse and, or your, your war pony, and you're, you're riding along while Aiden's walking beside you. And a couple day, uh, a couple more days pass. You guys keep watching over people. Um, MZ, what are you doing while all this is happening? You've probably had a, a number of days to think over stuff, and now uh, you guys are still on high alert, but you're traveling with the group. Yeah, I guess I'm just putting in my shifts when uh, when they're needed, and you know. While you're you're taking one of these shifts, and you know you're kind of like doing a perimeter scan you see there's that woman again she's the it seems like she's the leader of the hunters who are here and she kind of like nods to you and walks on up sorry i don't think we've met before you're a member of death shift yeah i am mz i hold out my hand the name's oldrich windcatcher i'm the second in command for the hunters so what happened in there I mean, a lot of us are speculating. We heard bits and pieces, but a lot of us went missing. I... I really... I'm not the best person to, to really say what happened. Um, I mean, it seemed like as soon as something was about to pop off, I, I got hit by something. I, I don't know. I just I couldn't concentrate. Kind of seeing double ringing in my ear. And then next thing I know... I got ripped through a portal. Ah, that just seems like the Chosen's fate, huh? It was, uh, it was Ronnie that pretty much did everything. And as for Kelsar and Borodon, I wasn't with them. I don't know what, what happened with them. Well, I'm sure we'll all be giving our reports when we get back. So, what was it like in Arkham? Kind of had this twisted feeling to it. I didn't really stop to explore anything. I just had a bad vibe about everything. We had reports. There was rumors. No one could ever really make it in. Apparently they were open to trading with Nesme for a bit, but they quickly shut down. But people were reporting things like wounded villagers just wandering around and it's just strange forests and stuff in there. Did you see anything? <sighs> the city was kind of in shambles like it I don't know it was a strange place where are you from where am I from yeah I'm, I'm gonna butcher this name <laughs> <laughs> I've been butchering every name in the forgotten realm so I'm sure you're fine <laughs> I literally don't think I can uh... why don't you spell it out and we'll try to pronounce it it was the Gith Yankees capital yeah it's like uh, the largest City. This one. I put it in rolls. Tunareth? I'd say Tunareth. Yeah. Unless one of you guys have a better idea of that. Tunareth. Tunareth? Right, I don't know. That. That, sounds, <laughs> that sounds fantasy. <laughs> you know, like instead of Tunareth, like Tunareth. You know, you hold both of your hands and up in the air, <laughs> Tunareth. <laughs> I'll uh, praise that son. <laughs> I'll say I'm from uh, Tunarath, <laughs> and uh, it's the astral plane. Oh, interesting. I'm from the Feywilds. Didn't think I would ever actually come to a place like this, but I got recruited for it. I never pictured myself being here either. Uh, where I was from, it was we were always on the hunt for things. I was a part of the hunt. We would get summoned at different 
peak times of magic in certain worlds and just go into them and hunt down creatures and people or demons. Different worlds? All over the place. It's wherever the wherever the leaders of the hunt would take us, we would just go and the feeling that you would get, it would just be like you're walking in a dream and the adrenaline going through you. <laughs> but eventually I was uh, recruited by truth. Yeah, I know that feeling. I was always going on hunts as well. Although my hunts were in the same place all the time, in these deep, dark tunnels. But at least it felt like a purpose, right? Like you, you knew what you were doing, and here it just feels so vague. I love the hunt. I can hunt anything in the dark. What did you hunt? Mostly a lithid. Now that is <laughs> quite the prey. Yeah, they're, uh... Have you ever killed one? No, I haven't, actually. Well, I'm sure your day will come. Every time I get close to killing one, either I get killed, or someone else killed it. They usually brought me along because I was so good at tracking. Like I said, I can I can track anything down below. Really? Well, I'll have to remember that. That might come in handy for us. We might need you for a few things. Anytime. I heard that there was word that there were lithid-like creatures in the city. In Sanctuary. Did you see any? There was. There definitely was. It didn't look like a normal one, though. This one was different. Well, they're smart. They're probably building something or doing experiments or something. I can't remember what it said. Something about the blood god or... Oh, I can't remember. Is that you as a player you can't remember? Yeah, well, both. I can't remember. I can't remember what he said. Okay. Heretic of blood or something? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, okay. Heretic of blood? Was that like you? I don't know. <laughs> I'm assuming so. Well, at least your prey is afraid of you. That's something. I did kill this one, but I I feel it doesn't truly count because this wasn't like it just wasn't that classic mind flare. This was this was something else. What that being that was experimented on? Yeah, whatever it was in sanctuary. It resembled a mind flare, but it wasn't the true one. We'll have to be careful. At least with Dorum's armies now pretty much rendered useless, we just have to look for a castle and we can take care of the things on the sides. It's been a long fight. Doomsayer wanted to go on this fight. He was rushing to get out, but he's already died twice, so they're hesitant to let him out. Oh, really? Him and many others of the higher-ups have already died twice. I know Sven has. I believe the one uh, Lord Elwyn has also died twice. They're very cautious about letting them out because they're such big pillars of our group, but if they were to become corrupted, they would know everything. Yeah. Have you died yet? Not yet. I've come close a few times. I'm guessing those bluish veins on you is from dying. Yeah. A mind flare got me. <laughs> well, hopefully he doesn't get you next time. Uh, I've seen a few things with people. Like, Doomsayers become more and more machine. It wasn't always like that. I was here when he arrived. He only had a metal arm and a metal leg, and now he's mostly machine. I know uh, Sven also has... A lot of their appendages are made into, like, diamonds. Very difficult to break, but I imagine it doesn't feel great. No. Well, MZ, you be careful and keep those eyes open. If you see anything, just let me know. I just nod my head at him. And she walks away. Er, her, sorry. So you guys make it after traveling for quite some time. It's been a few weeks now. You are still quite tired because you never had the chance to truly relax. You've always been very on edge. Everyone's been doing watches. You're all worried that Doran's going to show up. 
You make it back to New Dawn and you see there are banners waiting for you. Welcome home. You hear music celebrating your arrival. You see there are balloons and, or fantasy balloons, huh? and uh, confetti and everything. And uh, there's tons of people just waiting to celebrate. You see all of the higher ups of the Chosen are there and uh, a lot of townsfolk and probably people that uh, a lot of the soldiers had started families with or become familiar with friends. And they're all there waiting to celebrate. And you walk in and everyone is shouting and cheering. And the cheering kind of dies down a little bit as they realize only such a small portion has made it back. But the music carries on and a lot of people go running up to a lot of the different people in the crowd. There's a lot of clapping for you as you come in. You see there is food lined up everywhere. Like This is a great feast. Kegs are set up, bottles of wine. You see Astoria is walking towards you all with Sven. Uh, and Doomsayer is rushing over to talk with Windcatcher. Uh, a lot of people are just everywhere all around. And what, what about uh, Spellsinger? Like, she spent this whole time... She's still unconscious. Jesus. Okay. Yeah, she hasn't managed to regain consciousness yet. Mm-hmm. I'm getting a drink. Yeah, there are kegs up plenty. Yeah, I'm going with Kelser. Like, I need a drink. Uh, how about you, Ronnie and MC? Is there, like, uh, food around? Maybe I'll go look for some food or something. Oh, there's tons of food. There are tables of food. There's, like, everything you can think of. I want kebabs. <laughs> yeah, you find them. <laughs> you find this dwarf. He's got, like, a kiss the chef apron. And he's just got handfuls of them. He's handing them out. And he sees you. He's like, you look like you could use a kebab, boy. <laughs> I need that kebab. Give me that kebab. <laughs> he hands you these two kebabs, and uh, in his hands they look, you know, decent size, but you pick them up, and you're a lot more leaf than he is, and they're like these massive kebabs. So you just start chowing down. How about you, MZ? Um, I'll grab a plate of food, but I'm definitely not drinking. I feel as, uh, as time's gone on, I've, his, he slowly stopped drinking just out of, like, paranoia and sort of uh, anxiousness and everything like that. Scared that something can pop off at any minute, you know? Yeah. So I'm definitely gonna just get some food and probably watch watch my back. So uh, you guys are eating, a few of you are drinking and just relaxing. This goes on for maybe like half an hour. You're, you're talking to a lot of people. You see a lot of people are laughing. Some people you see are in tears because they realize others aren't coming home. A lot of the prisoners that you managed to rescue are now just stuffing their face with food. It's been so long since they've eaten such a good meal. And they're having drinks and laughing because they're finally free of everything. I guess we did something right for once. And... As the four of you are sitting there and just enjoying yourselves for a little bit, the enjoyment, of course, is cut short as screams. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you, Lucas. No problem. <laughs> screams cut through the crowd. Mm-hmm. You hear the snaps of bones and the tearing of flesh. As you look over, there was maybe seven old men in the crowd and they start bubbling and their arms are twisting and breaking people are quickly backing up grabbing weapons and you watch these creatures tear from their bodies and the size doesn't make sense but seven 20 foot tall creatures rip out of these small elderly men's bodies they have eyes all over them they have this large gaping mouth. These tentacles start coming out of them and slamming down on the ground. And the music is cut short.
days are getting darker, travelers. The nights are growing longer. And now, Dorum's forces grow ever stronger. Arkham may have been taken out, yes. But some days it feels like that was just... Collateral damage to her. She didn't even notice. She simply waved it to the side. The next tale is quite a dark one, travelers, and I do hope you're ready. It is one where victory seems very fleeting and far away. They're all at the windows, traveler. They're all looking in. They've been carving on the side of the inn, but not sure what. They can't probably look through the windows, they're right at them. They put a lot of blankets up around the windows and curtains, but... It's not really doing a whole lot, it's almost like they can see right through them. I feel like my spells are the only thing holding them at bay. Oh boy. Travelers, if you wish to help out, power up my spells a little bit. Give us a little bit more of a fighting chance. You could head on over to the Atunes and toss us some reviews. Bolster our morale. Message us on the Twitter. We always love hearing from you. And we also have a, a Discord server if you're interested in hopping on there and just talking about Battle of the Seven Dice. We have all sorts of fun things. But travelers, I must get back to these spells. It's the only thing holding them at bay. I bid you all it's you. Hey everybody! You want a new D&D 5th Edition podcast to listen to? <laughs> well, I know I'm always looking for one, so guess what? I've got a recommendation for you. It's called Cheaper by the Dungeon. It's a Dungeons & Dragons campaign following the adventures of Zippy, Darian, and Norman D as they travel to become the greatest treasure hunters of all time. We've got some hardcore action. That's Five, 18 damage, 18 damage, four, 18 damage. Three, you come through with an 18 damage, you're swinging another, another swing, <laughs> another swing, that's another seven, it's 17 damage. Two, 17 damage, seven, 17 damage. 17 damage. Comedy, right. So you wanna, you wanna bet on your friends? What do you wanna bet? Uh, they're very lives, I think. As high as it goes. I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm ready to win today. Okay. And even some dramatic moments. You have chosen the path you've sown. Now travel to the depths alone. And I, with Royce, I grab him and I throw him over the edge. But most of all, this show is filled to the brim with heart. And we hope that you come and join our adventure and become a cheapskate yourself. Catch Cheaper by the Dungeon anywhere you get your podcasts. Check us out. Love you. <laughs> All right, yeah, we did it. More treasure. I got to find it. It's mine. Darian, Zippy, that was, that was so good. Wow. Oh, I'm, I'm amazed. Yeah.